What's going on growers? It's James Pizzioni coming to you live from Jersey. Today, I wanna to share with you a simple trick that'll guarantee you a bigger pea harvest. Let's go. Today's garden trick pertains to the two kinds of peas that I grow in my garden, snap peas and snow peas. Both of these have edible pods and they can be eaten raw or cooked. Snow peas tend to be flatter with their pods, while the snap peas tend to be a little bit thicker. When it comes to these cultivars, you can grow either vining ones or dwarf ones. I tend to like the vining ones because you can grow them up trellises and they save a lot of space. Some edible pods have strings running down them, which need to be removed before you eat them, but there are actually varieties that are stringless as well. So I'm going to show you a little bit later how to peel those strings off the ones that are stringed. Now I want to show you a section where we're growing some peas up a trellis along this fence line here. And along this fence, we grow multiple things. We grow peas, we grow grapes, and then we'll grow cucumbers after the peas are finishing up. And these are the snap peas, stringless variety. This is the sugar snap, one of my favorite ones. So you can just eat it just like that, pop it into your mouth, or just take a bite out of it. One thing about peas is that they're nitrogen fixtures, which is excellent. So what goes on here is there's a symbiotic relationship between the peas and a bacteria, a rhizobia bacteria. This bacteria actually takes uh, nitrogen from the atmosphere and puts it down into the soil. So what this means is these peas grow in a dark, nice, beautiful green color. And something to think about is you actually don't want to use uh, much fertilizer with nitrogen in it for the peas because then you may just get a lot of leaf growth and not actually a lot of peas forming. So think about that when you're fertilizing and growing your peas. Peas actually don't like to be transplanted. So when you're going to put them in the ground, it's best to just plant them from seed. And one thing about peas is actually they're super hardy. They can even tolerate some early frost. Something else about them though is once they get above 75 degrees, they really start getting negatively affected as Tuck's trying to pick some of his own peas here. He loves to do that when they're coming through the fence sometimes. He'll rip at them a little bit, which isn't good for the actual pea plant, but it's hard to stop him when he gets too excited about it. And uh, another thing is when they get above 70 degrees, that'll actually slow the production around, uh, down as well. So it's good to plant them in a shady spot if you have a really, really warm location. And if you're gonna plant them in the spring, a good timing is about four to six weeks before your first frost date. And if you're gonna plant them in the fall, it's good to actually plant them behind something like cucumbers or, um, or pole beans because that shade will actually help them get started and then they can start producing as it cools off. When it comes to gardening, as some of you veterans know, and I think as even some of you newer gardens are starting to learn, that it's not always easy. But that's one of the things I love about it because I found in life basically that the things that are super easy usually don't feel as worth it. The things that you have to work hard for, the things that you have to continue pushing for, the things that you have to show persistence for usually are the ones that, you know, they bring you so much value when you actually get to it, when you achieve that goal. So you may be planting some new fruit trees or you may even be growing tomatoes or even peas like I am today and it's just not working out for you. I, and you might have put the time in, you might have put the work in, and it just feels like it's not paying off. But I wanna encourage you to stick with it, to keep pushing, because I promise you, once it does come, once you start getting the harvest in, it'll be so worth it. Every moment, every taste, it's just, like I said, the things that you have to put work in for, they tend to always be more worth it, in my opinion, in the long run. If you guys are enjoying the video, and you, uh, like the shirts that we're wearing here. We actually just released some of these shirts, some coffee mugs and some different things that you can actually get your hand on and purchase if you wanna be a part of Team Grow, if you wanna contribute to the channel and you wanna just uh, give back for some of the value that we're trying to provide you. When planting peas, another thing you wanna take into account regarding variety is having early, mid and late season ones. And now I wanna show you a stringless pea right here. And when you're harvesting peas, you don't want to just rip out the plant like this because that could negatively affect the plant and that could reduce some of the production you're actually going to get. It's good to come out here with a scissor just like this and just cut it off. After you've removed it, if you've got a stringed one, take the top off, take the back and peel the string as you can see like that. And then there's another string on the other side. So we'll peel it like that. Then your pea is ready to be eaten. You can just take a bite. so good, so fresh. Peas like this, at this age, I like to put them um, in my stir fry, eat them with my eggs, or just even throw them in a salad. The simple trick that anybody can do to guarantee a higher pea harvest has to do with harvesting. So what you wanna do is come out here and harvest the peas basically every single day once they start forming. The reason for this is once you have some peas that are fully formed, say we've got maybe some larger ones over here, 
This one's not that big yet, but once they get fully formed, what's gonna happen is the pea plant is gonna focus on just producing these and forming these into seeds so it can work on the next generation. If instead we come and harvest them when they're young, when they're small like this, this pea plant will, pea plant will continue to produce flowers and continue to produce more and more and more fruit, giving us an overall higher yield by the end of the year. When it comes to growing your peas, if the plants dry out, that's also gonna reduce your harvest. So it's important to have a nice thick mulch down. I like to use wood chips, they've always worked well for me. And another reason to come and grab them early is if you allow these plants to get, these peas to get overripe, then the flavor is just gonna drop off. They're not gonna be as juicy, they're not gonna be as sweet, not as flavorful. And another thing is if you harvest your peas within about, within a few hours actually, the, uh, the sugars in the peas is gonna convert to starch. So when you pick them, you wanna eat them basically as early as you can. Nothing better than fresh right off the plant. So good. And when you pop them open, if you get them at the right time, there's nothing better than these sweet, juicy little balls of sugar. Again, you don't want them to get overripe or they'll dry out and they won't be as sweet. So good. It's one of the things about peas I love so much. You can eat them in different stages. You can eat them when they're young and thin or you can eat them when, later when you can get the whole peas. And behind me, I can hear Tuck eating his peas as well. As you can see, he's harvesting some of his own sometimes. But we'll grab a couple for him, make sure he gets his uh, handful of peas just like we do. There's one other thing I wanted to mention regarding planting peas, and this has to do with if you live in the south. What some people like to do is in the late, late fall, they'll put the pea seeds into the ground and let those uh, overwinter in the ground. And then this way, in the early spring, as early as they possibly can, they'll pop up and you'll get to utilize as much time as you can to grow those peas. Now I wanna grab a couple snow peas and a couple snap peas, just to give you guys a visual difference between the two. So right here, we've got some snow peas. I'm gonna harvest a couple of them. First off the bat, as you can see, the, the pods are much flatter than the snap peas. So we've got some snap peas right here. And just visually, you can see a little darker in the green, but you can see the snow peas, they're much thinner in their pods. So what we're gonna do now is see which one, it, Tuck actually approves of both of them. Tuck, want one boy? So he usually tends to go for the snap peas as he did there, but he's not too partial, I guess, in regards to the snow peas too. Some of these tend to be a little stringier sometimes of the varieties, so a little harder to eat, but he does love his snap peas like me. Uh, the snap peas, I think, are his favorite. Nothing like eating a garden snack with your pup. Enjoying the weather. The sugar and snap peas are one of my favorite ones. So good. If you watch the channel, one thing you know is I like to utilize as much space as I can. So I've got peas growing up all my fence lines. There, there. I've got more growing up inside the new food forest over there. And then I've got plenty growing in this section over here, more here, and a lot over here. So what I'm going to do is go through and harvest a bunch of these. I'll give you guys a short little time lapse of that because I want to make sure that I could try to get a whole nother harvest, a whole nother round of peas by removing the ones that are on here. Uh, one thing to mention though is after your peas have finished producing, what you want to do is cut them down at ground level. You want to rip out the roots because on the roots you're going to have those nitrogen nodules that are formed. So you want to keep those in the ground. This way it can help fertilize and give some more nitrogen to the soil. So our things like our cucumbers and whatever we plant next excels also. As we were making the video, you can see Tuck dug a little hole out here outside the peas. Uh, they shouldn't negatively affect the peas, so we should be okay. Let's get some of these purple peas though. I love the color of these. The flavor is pretty decent, but just the color is so striking. Oh, my. 
once I got myself in rust Too much time spinning mirrors framed in yellow Times come with prices and I can't believe it when I hear the jokes they make. That's today's video goers. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. As you can see, we got a nice harvest so far and there's still more out there we have to harvest, but I'm going to go inside, bring these in and then refill the bucket again. But as you can see, we're not going to be able to eat all these in the next couple hours. So I'm going to give a number of them away. Then I'm also going to freeze some. We're just going to blanch it lightly, put them in freezer bags and freeze it like that. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, share it with your friends. And if you want to get some of the shirts and some of the coffee mugs and stuff, check out the link in the description. We and Tuck will catch you back real soon. We out.